Hey guys, my name is Shai. Welcome to your Archangel messages for whenever you are watching this. The kind of general card I pulled to just give us a theme for this overall reading is this Light Beings card. The message with this card is basically that you cannot mess up your ascension. I feel like some people might be worried that they're doing it wrong or that they're not spiritual enough or that they're, you know, shouldn't be watching Netflix and eating pizza because that is distracting them from their spirituality or that so-and-so is so much more spiritual than them or that you're worried about where you are on your spiritual path or that you haven't put in enough effort or that you haven't put in enough work or you guys get the idea, right? Whatever it is, somebody is worrying that they're messing up their ascension, that they're not serious enough about it. But this card, I mean, I know it just says light beings and we can see galaxies and stars and planet Earth here and this face. They're, it's these higher dimensional beings coming through to let you know that really you've already ascended you are having a linear experience of that ascension. This is kind of like a game or a movie you get to watch of your own experience and you get to fine tune your experience because of course it plays out in, you know, infinite parallel realities and you get to decide how much fun this one is for you. In some of the other parallel realities, your ascension process is less fun because you kind of resist it and you be stubborn and you decide to stay, you know, to make it take longer and that's fine. There's nothing wrong with that. That is just another experience. In some of your other parallel lives, maybe your ascension is quicker and easier and smoother because you just gave in right from the beginning and decided to just go with the flow. For most of us, we're kind of in the middle and there's nothing wrong with that either. <laughs> there's already a version of you, a version of humanity, a version of earth that is completely ascended, that is completely anchored in 5D, if you want to think of it that way, you know, everything is already done. Everything already exists and we are just having this experience of it and there's nothing you can do to mess it up. So that is the big message coming through for everybody before we get into the different piles is you don't need to worry about how well you are ascending. You're doing it perfectly. You're doing everything you're supposed to be doing. And if you find yourself doing things that feel low, low vibrational, to you. You don't need to judge yourself for it. It's perfectly fine. Just keep being you. Keep putting one foot in front of the other. You literally can't mess this up because you've already done it. You're just experiencing it as you go. So that is that. <laughs> now I'll let you pick your cards and we'll get into the individual readings. Hey, Pile One, welcome to your reading. You guys are really being stretched like vertically stretched you have this divine wisdom card which is representing your soul star chakra if you're not familiar with that it's basically the chakra above your crown chakra it is i kind of feel mine about a foot above my head or maybe like eight inches above my head and that is your gateway to your higher self gateway to the infinite it is a transpersonal chakra it is something you activate when you are really getting deep into your spiritual journey and the divine wisdom is all about you knowing and you really starting to experience actually you're starting to experience uh through a lot of synchronicities and through coming to conclusions yourself maybe you didn't really have a lot of faith in them at first you thought oh i'm just making that up or that's just weird why did i even think that but you get a feeling of something you're getting like intuitive or psychic hits on something and then you actually get confirmation you find out that this is something that is real and you're you're like wow <laughs> how did i know that um stuff like that that is you realizing that you didn't you never need to seek information or love or resources from outside of yourself you get that all from inside of yourself and it is simply fun to have that validated and confirmed from the outside world i'm really reminded of my husband who doesn't know anything like he doesn't have any conscious conceptions of anything religious or spiritual or new agey he's just he's beating to the beat of his own drum which which is what i love about him right and one day he was imagining revving up 
a little pine cone he found deep inside of his brain. And he didn't know about the pineal gland. He didn't know about the concept of the third eye or any of that. But he, without knowing that he had a pineal gland, sensed that he had a little pine cone shaped gland in the center of his brain. And he felt like if he could rev that up enough that he would be able to do like remote viewing he came up with that all on his own in complete isolation and i was completely floored i remember looking at him going oh my god do you do you, you don't even know about your pineal gland and even as a biological thing he didn't even know about it in terms of biology and he didn't know anything about your third eye or about chakras or <laughs> any of that and that was so so impressively validating to have to to see somebody be able to notice that about themselves without any external information. That's the kind of thing you guys are experiencing here. And it is being really beautifully grounded because your other card here is Red Spectrum. This is from a indie deck. It is an Archangel Light Code deck, Archangel Light Codes. This is the card that came out, Red Spectrum. This is obviously your root chakra, which is so wonderful to see because a lot of the time we get so stretched out like activating our crown chakra or activating our soul star chakra and our third eye that we forget to get grounded and then we get all kinds of lopsided and it is nuts so you guys are going both ways you're activating the top of your tree the high branches your higher chakras your higher wisdom and you are also getting simultaneously deeply grounded deeply rooted healing your root chakra and connecting with the earth and that is going to give you so much stability as you go through this um really high frequency activation to your soul star chakra and to your your inner wisdom because uh and it is just it is so good to see this root chakra card here because you guys have the nine of swords and we all know what that means that is your anxiety that is your feeling plagued by your thoughts not being able to stop thinking waking up at night being scared having nightmares all of that, all of those terrible things that nobody likes to go through. And I, I feel like this is partly because of this activation to your soul star chakra. When you start having that higher level of abstract awareness come online and then you have all of this information come down, down through, you have so much to process. And Especially for those of you watching this in summer of 2020, this is the actually the first video I've made in a couple of weeks, I think, because it was just all of those eclipses, and that was so nuts for me, uh, the level of transformation and activations I had to go through. I feel like I have just been spat out the other side, and I'm finally feeling back to normal, finally having my energy levels back, but for me, it was such a draining, exhausting experience. And it would be entirely normal for you guys to be going through like an anxiety inducing fearful experience. We're all, you know, kind of experiencing those shifts in energy differently. And I know in the past, what I have just gone through in the last couple of months would have definitely been anxiety inducing for me. It just so happens that this year it was more of just an exhaustion experience. But for you guys, it is entirely understandable and normal for it to be an anxiety inducing experience. You could be afraid of what's happening to you. And you could be kind of seeing or sensing, you know, unsavory, un unpleasant shadow energies. Uh, you could be afraid of that. You could be afraid of opening yourself up to, um, you know, new new energies to new levels of your psychic perception because you are afraid of what you might see, what you might experience. And those fears, even though... You know, on the one hand, you don't have anything to fear because you're going to be fine and none of these, you know, parasites or um, shadow beings can really do anything to you, <laughs> not unless you let them. They can't do anything to you that you can't let them, that you don't let them to. It is still normal for you to have those, that fear of them. And probably a lot of you have had run-ins with these kind of energies in your past lives and you're remembering that kind of trauma and this is your chance to work through that. Um, just, just keep working through it, getting rooted uh, getting grounded and tuning into your heart space and invoking whatever kind of protection you want. Whatever kind of protection you want. And I was just looking here, the Knight of Swords, when I said protection. I don't typically see the Knight of Swords as an Archangel Michael figure, but I was really just staring at this sword, and that is the sword of Michael. To me, at least right now, definitely an invitation to tune into, to, to tune into Michael and ask for his protection if you're feeling um, feeling threatened, even if you're just feeling anxious, feeling worried, 
he can definitely come in and <sighs> clear all of that out. Definitely clear all of that out. And on another level, this Knight of Swords is about you carrying your divine wisdom forward. This divine wisdom, this knowledge that you are learning entirely from within. You know, you guys are all channeling source <laughs> you, you in order to exist in order to be a consciousness you are channeling source and you might not think of yourself as a channel channeler you might not think of yourself as spiritually gifted at all but just the fact that you exist means you are a channel and you guys are downloading information you are getting psychic hits you are reading the akashic records you are absorbing a ton of information empathically um, all of that you're learning to process and you're building your own mental paradigms, your own mental constructs, your own like understanding of this information, you know, this data, this information, this light comes in and you have to try and make sense of it, especially when it's just kind of coming in clear cognitively and you're, you're like, what, <laughs> like, what, how do I even put this all together? I can't find that. I, I struggle with this a lot. I get all these ideas, all these information and I don't know how it all fits together. And of course, then I hit Google and I'm trying to figure out what to make of it all, but nobody knows. There's no there's no answers to be found, even on the internet. And we're so used to finding all the answers on the internet. But you find the answer within yourself. So you guys are collecting all of these dots. You're collecting all of this data. You're processing the data and you're putting it together. And you're finally going to be able to explain it to yourself. And as soon as you can explain it to yourself, then you can explain it to others. The Knight of Swords carries messages carries that air energy, carries those messages forward. So you're going to be communicating some of this with people. It doesn't mean you have to get up on the soapbox, like I always say. It doesn't mean you need to start a YouTube channel or a blog, but there's going to be opportunities for you to communicate what you are learning in your inner self, in your inner landscape. You're learning things, you're downloading messages, and you're making sense of them, and you're going to be able to communicate them to people. And, you know, you don't always need to tell people, oh, you know, I was meditating and an archangel came and talked to me and told me these things or you know oh my guides told me this or oh i had this crazy dream or oh i had this clear cognizant understanding of this thing you know of course in this kind of space i love this because we can all talk about stuff like that and we can be as you know quote unquote crazy as we like because we're all just talking to each other and we're all on the same page which is why i love love <laughs> making these videos because i can be as weird as i want but you know, when we're talking to especially some of our family members, you know, that just are on a different paradigm than us or just random people or even our friends who aren't, you know, who aren't going to resonate with this kind of way of perceiving reality, you don't need to talk about it in that way. You can just use normal language to describe your ideas and you can communicate it that way. You don't always need to bring it back to, you know, astrology and tarot cards and channeling and whatever. You can use a normal language, normal mundane, everyday language to talk about it. And this is going to work out well for you. And it is really going to be bringing in some kind of wish fulfillment. Look at this. Nine of vessels, the nine of cups, which is the wish come true card. The wish come true card. The only caveat with this, and this is like Robin Hood. I love Robin Hood, guys. I was always so obsessed with Robin Hood stories when I was a kid, but... The thing about the Nine of Cups is you won't always get the manifestation of your wish that you would like thought of. You know, maybe you're thinking of getting some kind of particular job and it, will, it might not be the job that you applied for, the, the exact job you're thinking of, but you are going to get your dream job. You just don't know what that is yet. So tune into the, freq the frequency of what you're trying to accomplish with all of this and you will receive that frequency back. It's, it's going to be a frequency package like your wish come true will happen in in terms of frequency not so much in specific mundane outcomes i think that is the end of your guys's messages thank you so much for tuning in i hope to see you guys again soon bye hey pile two welcome to your reading i love your guys's cards you have love and archangel tzatzikiel i can't really pronounce that but uh, the subtext here is compassion and forgiveness and right next to love. So that tells you right there. And of course, we got the Ace of Wands and the Star. But before I jump into all of this, I wanted to show you the three cards that were, showed, that were at the bottom of your deck. I picked this up and I was like, oh, 
sweet. They got the high priestess and I pulled it up and I was like, okay, it, get, it gets even more awesome. Star seed and then two of cups. I don't think I'm going to really talk about these specifically uh, in this reading, but I wanted to show them to you and maybe I will just lay them out as bonus cards for anybody who is interested in those. Okay, so getting back to your original five cards here, I was really excited to see this love card come up because all morning I was thinking about how there is only one heart chakra, <laughs> like literally only one. I mean, I had always kind of known that on an intellectual level. I know, you know, people talk about that and I sort of knew it, but I never really understood it on a experiential level. And this morning, I just, I don't know, it just, that understanding just clicked into place. Now what this is, that's what this is here. This isn't necessarily romantic love, although that could be signaling that for some of you. But this here, this fiery heart, this is the one heart, the one heart chakra that no matter who you are, no matter what density or dimension you exist at, no matter their intelligence, you know, every human, every archangel, every ant, every cell, every mineral, every god or goddess, every source, everything that is in all that there is shares the one same heart chakra that, that we can, it's like a portal, a portal. It is the center of all things. That is what holds everything together. I know when you try to imagine that on a 3D level, that doesn't make any sense. But if you can zoom out and imagine that on a much more higher dimensional level, you can sort of get a sense of how everything t like wormholes through your heart chakra and, and you find out that it's the same heart chakra, literally kind of holding everything together. It is the wormhole or tunnel point or portal. So that is you guys absolutely coming into that kind of understanding and that is going hand in hand with so much heart healing. And you, you get to that place of heart healing by coming into a place of forgiveness, by practicing forgiveness, especially forgiving yourself. Uh, I, I know it can be, sometimes it can be easier to forgive other people than forgive ourselves. You guys are learning to do that. And that is opening up, opening you up to a, higher frequencies of compassion, compassion and forgiveness. I see this as coming as quite a relief to you guys because you're coming off of the five of wands, which is so much external conflict. This being here is holding up three wands to defend herself with, and she has two more planted in reserve. She has been fighting for a long time fighting external chaos, fighting chaos. But I think you guys are coming to kind of be okay with chaos and you're learning that you can make your magic. Ace of Wands, you can work your magic coming from your heart space. Oh, and I'm really drawn to this star card with this shining star portal. Let's see if I can show it to you. Look at that. Stars have hearts too, guys. Stars are profoundly conscious and they have a heart and you can connect to that. This is really coming into a sense of oneness and the law of one where you have experiences where you realize that you really are one with everything. And yeah, there's a lot of potential here for an ego death experience. And... I know we all struggle because we don't want to lose our egos entirely. I know if you're watching this, you're on your spiritual journey and you are realizing that there are aspects to your ego that you don't like or that no longer serve you and you're done with it because they're dragging you down, keeping you back. You are clearing that out. Absolutely. It's like it's getting sucked through <laughs> a black hole. It is like getting sucked out, getting sucked out and making way for light, making way for lighter, lighter energies, so much lighter energies coming in. And the star card is a lot about 
healing, about getting in tune with water and about finding stability and security after the fall of the tower, after all of that chaos that swept through your life, the chaos came through and swept through your life. Um, but whatever, whatever chaos happened to you, whatever conflicts you had to go through, that was, that was a, an experience you chose that you actually designed for yourself because you knew that once you came out the other side of it, you would be experiencing so much more love. It was like the experience of that pain and suffering and conflict and chaos is now you're on the other side and now you have so much more empathy for your fellow beings. You have a softer heart. Maybe you used to be kind of hard on people. You go, you know, why is that person homeless? Or why is that person on drugs? Or why doesn't that person get a job? You know, and I, I have I have literally said those things. So no judgment on you guys for having having if you've had those kind of thoughts I've had them too and I've worked hard to, <laughs> to kind of leave those behind me because I'm really I've really been learning how those are the silly and don't serve me or anybody else so anyway you know if you've been hard on yourself or other people in the past going through your struggles has softened your heart a lot and now you understand that we're all just trying to do our best and we all are doing our best and we all are on our path and we are all going to get there the star card is a that is a, that I kind of see that as your trajectory here it's where you're, you're heading into just peace you're heading into an era where you can tune into and tap into peace whenever you feel like it that that's what you've been practicing and with your softened heart with your much more opened heart not only are you increasing your empathy you're also opening up your empathic abilities um, I mean, I know I said I wasn't going to talk about them much, but we also have, they're impossible not to talk about, right? The High Priestess, the Star Seed, and the Two of Cups. The Two of Cups is so similar to the Lovers. So this is so much having a fresh new start. The Star Seed is the Fool. So if the word Star Seed doesn't interest you, you can think about the Star Seed as the Fool, as the fresh start, as the zero point field, as the you being reborn with infinite new potential and without all of your past baggage it's like being reborn without any karma um is one way of looking at that and the high priestess is i mean high priestess yo right <laughs> she comes here to say that you know you have come so far on your spiritual journey and you are a powerful powerful being this high priestess does not come out for any reason she wants you to recognize your divinity and your sovereign power really, really knowing that there is no difference between you and something you might perceive of as a god. Because remember, everything is connected with this one heart. And the Two of Cups is also coming in to kind of, it's like replaying that same theme in two more ways. The Two of Cups and the Lovers to me are always, there's always two possibilities. For some of you, it's the internal and the external bringing that into harmony. It can also be your masculine and feminine coming into harmony, which is really important when you bring all of these energies into balance, into harmony. Um, when you resolve these polarities, that just opens you up to whole new levels of reality and evolution and vibration. And obviously with the Two of Cups, for some of you, this is your romantic life finally getting into balance. Some of you have probably been in a relationship for a long time, but it's been like bogged down or it's like even though you've been together it's felt like you've been separated because you just couldn't get on the same level energetically but maybe you guys knew you didn't want to throw in the towel but you just couldn't get the love back if that's you then this is finally this is going to start to uh even out and come back into balance it's just because you guys each had to go on your own spiritual journeys and or you know and it didn't even have to manifest as an overtly spiritual journey it's just personal growth right and now you're coming back into a place where this is going to start to balance out and you're coming back together energetically and it's going to be a beautiful rebirth of your relationship. Others of you, this is, you know, your your soulmate coming in for you. So everybody likes to see the two of cups, right? Who doesn't want to be <laughs> seeing the rainbow at the end of the tunnel? And that is also, ooh, the rainbow bridge. The rainbow bridge. Building bridges between realities between worlds 
you could be coming together with someone or you're simply building this bridge internally or externally, right? You guys know how it goes with this energy. It is either internal or external. It's either, you know, it's two different dualities and you are bridging them. What does that mean for you? What dualities are you bridging? What two things are you bringing together? What two things are you harmonizing? Building the rainbow bridge. I feel like that term is important. The rainbow bridge. Yeah. The rainbow bridge to the stars for some of you. And you build that rainbow bridge with your love, with your compassion, with your newfound love and compassion. And understanding the frequency of the one unified heart. And I think that's what I'm seeing for you guys. So thank you so much for tuning in. I hope to see you guys again soon. Bye. Hey, pal three, welcome to your reading. I had flipped up this nurturing card first and then serenity. And I thought, yeah, this is about self-nurturing, self-love, self-care, that kind of thing. Making sure that you are refilling your cup first so that you can become a fountain that gives and loves the world from a place of overflow. I just had such a sense that this was about yourself, taking care of yourself, nurturing yourself, not to the exclusion of others, but knowing that that is actually the best way to serve others. And then I flipped up the self card. <laughs> so that was a lovely bit of confirmation. I wish I had that on camera, but um, I think you guys, I think most of you won't think I'm trying to deceive you on that one. So that is just my story of how I received validation or confirmation on that. This is, you guys are coming into a self-actualization. I think that is almost the best word here. If any of you remember from Psych 101, <laughs> Maslow's hierarchy of needs, you guys have met, you know, your lower, lower level of, you know, food, shelter, security, and, you know, you moved up into those layers of finding creative outlets and friendship and more fulfilling experiences, and you're coming into the top of the pyramid, the top of the pyramid. I don't think... Most of you are entirely there yet. You're probably sitting there going, no, I don't feel self-actualized. Well, not quite yet, but you're getting, <laughs> you're getting so close. And the thing is, it's not like the journey ends when you get to the top of the pyramid. You realize that there's like another pyramid for you to climb. You know, our problems and our challenges never go away, but we can transmute them so that our future problems are more fun. It's like things just become more of a fun challenge, a fun game, and we can leave behind all of this Oh, so the struggling and this pain and this struggling through density. I'm actually really reminded of the, the one biggest reoccurring dream I've had throughout my entire life. You know, I know some people have dreams where they're drowning or dreams where they're falling or, you know, those kind of recurring nightmares. For me, my recurring nightmare ever since I was very small has been... I'm trying to do something, but I am being thwarted at every turn. Like maybe I'm in the library and I'm trying to return my library book. Pretty mundane, right? But I will feel like I will literally be moving so slow. It's like moving through, I don't know, what is what is like a really, really thick liquid. Like, like walking through molasses, but even harder than that, I'd be, you know, trying to run and I'd be like, ah, but I'd be going super slow motion, just trying to push, push through and just feeling resistance in the very air around me, like running through glue that is almost dried and just being and in, in these dreams, in these nightmares, I'm always so frustrated. Like I'm trying to scream and I can't scream. I'm trying to move and I can't move. And even when I do finally get moving, you know, I'll get to the, <laughs> the stupid library drop box and it's locked and then I need to find the other box. But then all these people start pestering me and bothering me or getting in my way and just things start happening. It's like I can never accomplish what I'm trying to accomplish because everything is so frustrating, so frustrating. And I always called that my cosmic frustration because I would, I've spent most of my life being deeply, deeply frustrated. And I never, I never really understood any of this until very recently. <laughs> and now I understand that I was literally frustrated with the experience of density of our third density with everything all the vibrations and everything being so dense here and everything being so fixed, you know, knock on the table. It's a hard table. <laughs> that is density. That is literal density. Where we are from, where our oversouls are from, 
everything is light and free and high vibrational, high frequency, and you can manifest whatever you want, right? <laughs> it's um, a place of freedom and creation. So, you know, we come down here and everything is so frustrating, so frustrating because deep in our soul, we know that, you know, it's not always like this, right? This is an experience we chose to come into to have some fun, do some learning, to be of service, all of that. But it, it, this is a like a game we chose to play. And that doesn't mean that when we're in our amnesia state that we don't forget, um, you know, that we we forget that it's not always like this. And when we start to think that this third density experience is forever, that is when it is so frustrating. So that whole tangent is, that's what you guys are coming out of. You're starting to come out of that frustration experience and coming into just serenity. Look at the light language on this card, guys. Look at that. Just take a minute to feast your eyes on this. You're coming into that place of centeredness where you can just sit in your heart space and just be happy. Just be not even necessarily happy because it doesn't have to be that, but okay with. Just open to the experience of your life, even if you are waiting to get a blood test and you're stuck in that horrible room with all those people like all those sick people trying to get a blood test done and it's just uh <laughs> but you know where before earlier in your life you might have been so frustrated with that now you can just kind of be okay with it and just know that it's a temporary experience and you can just sit in your equanimity and in your neutrality and wait it out and that is really really nurturing to your soul and like I was saying, this is how you look after yourself first. You fill up your own well first. You fill up your own cup first. And then you can nurture and look after everybody else. Because you guys have a lot to give. Down here you have the king of water and the sensual, which would be the knight of pentacles. This is the knight of earth. Yeah, I don't. these cards don't translate very well to regular tarot. But that's just to give you kind of an idea. So, King of Water, you guys have so much love to give, so much flow, so much compassion and love. But it, the King of Cups knows that he can't drain himself dry. If he wants to be the most of service, he has to make sure that he is in a place of <laughs> almost like he has to make sure if he's a being of water if he's a water being he has to make sure that his water is the perfect temperature if his water is not the right temperature it'll be it'll start to boil it'll boil, it'll like vibrate too fast right or it'll get really slow it'll get cold and it'll vibrate too slowly <laughs> so yeah that is actually you guys are learning to curate your vibration curating your vibration with the met i think the water metaphor there was interesting way of showing that to me curating your vibration knowing Okay, so maybe you feel like you have to check the news every other day because, you know, you want to make sure you know what's happening in the world. And maybe in your country there are some specific laws that you need to know when they've passed because you might need to take action. Maybe it's a tax thing or something like that, right? And you go, okay, okay, so I do need to check the news. <laughs> but you also understand that the news is toxic as fuck and most of it is a pile of shit. So, you know, you don't want to be getting sucked into those scrolling through the headlines right and now you're reading articles and you're on fox news and everything sucks and so you know it's really easy to let yourself go down that hole but you guys are getting better at literally opening up your news app or however you check the news flipping through finding whatever it is you needed to find and then closing it out maybe spending you know no more than five minutes checking the news and just literally doing a quick dive to find out what you needed to know about the progress of some bill or whatever. And then you're checking out and you're not even going <laughs> to let all the horrible things in the news. You're just, you know that there is no reason for you to vibrate with those stories, vibrate, especially with the presentation of those stories as they are presented in the news. And this doesn't have to be the news for all of you, right? This is just, I think, the easiest general example I'm picking up on. But of course... There's an element here of learning to really dance to the beat of your own drum because there's always going to be people who judge you and say, what, why aren't you keeping up with the news? Why aren't you keeping up? Like, you need to be informed. You know, you need to be opinionated about the news. You need to have an opinion on that and an opinion on that and you need to be keeping up with it. People are always going to be judging you for 
not following the news more regularly, right? They're going to call you irresponsible, but you guys are finding your own, your own way of doing that in the way that is tapping in only to what you need and only to what is useful to you and then tuning out the rest of it. And it is not, of course, some people do that where they go, oh, I just can't handle the news. I'm just going to shut it out and live under a rock and I'm going to pretend it doesn't exist. That is the unhealthy version of this. It's like the shadow aspect of what I'm talking about. And it is not what I'm talking about. You guys are like the evolved self-actualized version of that where, you know, you're not pretending like these things don't happen. You're not pretending that people aren't suffering. You're not pretending that governments aren't corrupt or any of that. You're just knowing that there's no reason for you to sit in that frequency. You can observe it, acknowledge it, and then just let it exist. You don't need to stay like with that, right? <laughs> it doesn't matter what is happening in public events. You can just float in your own curated frequency. You're not denying that anything, you're not denying what's going on. You're not even really trying to ignore it. You're just going to observe it, notice it, let it go, and really give your, giving yourselves permission to create your reality. And, and in, I, hope it's, I hope I'm being clear that I'm really talking about this doing in... Blah. <laughs> Sorry, guys. I hope I'm being clear that I really mean all of this in the most responsible high frequency enlightened kind of way this isn't a head in the sand kind of way and this is all because you are tuning into your what is most appropriate for your own self for your own higher self for your own individual journey curating your own experience really understanding that you are creating your own reality and i see this all grounded down with this essential I think that's how you say that. Essential? I think so. I'm going to go with that. <laughs> All being grounded down. This is um, a rooting card to me. This 12 of Earth. And that is why this ability you guys are developing and practicing to curate your energy, to curate your experience, it is not coming from a place of denial. It is coming from a place of groundedness. You are, you know exactly what is happening. You know exactly what is happening more than most people, more than the people who are obsessed with keeping up with the news, right? You guys are grounded. You are aware. You are. <laughs> I just had the weird sensation of my eyelids being peeled off, which is kind of unpleasant, but it's like your eyes are wide open. Your eyes are so wide open that. You are aware of everything and that, and once you are aware of everything, and this includes higher dimensional, you know, higher, higher levels of resonance. Once you're aware of all of these things, you guys have lifted the veil, like you've lifted the veil off of your own eyes. You've lifted the fog, lifted the smog. It's all, all of that, all the illusions are drifting your way and you are seeing things crystal, crystally clear. Things are becoming crystalline to you. And that is why you are now able to curate your experience, curate your energy, and create your reality in this really beneficial, heart-based, serene way that is so beneficial to your personal evolution and your self-actualization. So thank you so much for existing, guys, and for doing this work. Sending you so much love, and thank you for tuning in. Hope to see you again soon. Bye. Hey, Pile 4, welcome to your reading. You guys got Archangel Metatron with Empowered Self-Embodiment. This is really exciting. I love to see this card. I'm actually getting shivers just looking at this light language. So I would really invite you to, to just kind of gaze at this as I talk here. Archangel Metatron is the archangel who I have communicated with or <laughs> who has communicated with me uh, most obviously like really really tangibly this was when I was just kind of getting into these kind of things and I didn't really know what was happening I didn't know if I was making it up but he definitely came down and you know transmitted a packet of energy to me and it was one of the most fascinating experiences of my life <laughs> so in my view in my experience Metatron does not come through for people unless they are 
I mean, he's always, he's omnipresent. I view him as omnipresent and he's everywhere all the time. He's always with you, but you won't have an experience of noticing that communication, of having that communication more consciously, unless you are really, really resonating with seeking through, like really, really exploring the mysteries. Uh, the mystery is always the word that I associate with Metatron. He is all about exploring the mysteries of the cosmos. And if you are as well, it is really easy for you to reach out to him. He will come through for you if you are centered and if you are, you know, genuinely open to that experience. It can be useful if you want to connect with Metatron to imagine, uh, just picture or visualize Metatron's cube, that design. I'm sure you guys have seen it. And for me, I imagine my crown chakra spinning like a vortex and I invite him to come down and spin energy down into the, down into my crown chakra. That's just how I do it. You can practice that in meditation or while you're falling asleep, if you like. <laughs> But, man, you guys are really putting two and two together, really coming into balance. It all starts with this place of forgiveness. It was funny, one of the other piles had forgiveness as a major theme. This is, you know, along with this pink Metatron card, I see this actually as more of your high heart. You know, we all know about our heart chakra, and then there's also the high heart, which is kind of just above your heart. Um, it's kind of up in your, you know, your chest. Um, closer to your throat, it is where your throat chakra and your heart chakra kind of blend together. And I sense, anyway, the frequency of the high heart as being... How do I describe it? If If the heart is more of a sense of oneness and a sense of unconditional love that is very peaceful and kind of still almost. It is just oneness in the extreme and stillness and peacefulness in totality. It is it is one, one thing, right? The high heart to me feels much more active. It feels like, because you got to think it's mixing in with your throat energy at this point. It is active. It is more excited. It is more ecstatic. It is more vibrating outwards and you can direct it. You can do, I feel like you can do more with it. And I think a lot of people see the high heart as pink, which is why, you know, we got green, green and pink here. So you guys are, I would say you're activating your high heart and some of you might want to, you know, read up on that. Some of you might want to, you can really use your high heart to do uh, kind of next level energy work for those of you who are interested in that. And then down here in your tarot cards, you have Justice and Two of Cups and the World. Justice. The scales of justice are balancing. If you get excited when you see the Justice card, you should be. Because if you have been on the imbalanced side of the scale, which, you know, I guess would be the scale that's up top because the the heavier scale, you know, the scale with more gold on it, with more money on it, with more food on it, is the one that's down. If you've been up here with your your scales have been empty and everybody else, it seems to, if it seemed like everybody else was in a place of abundance and you were in a place of total lack, that is really shifting out for you because, you know, along with the justice, you're coming into two of cups and the world. This all culminates in the world, which is, this is the reality you are creating and I think there's an invitation here to make sure that you are creating this from your heart space and particularly for you guys from your high heart. Remembering that, you know, like I was saying in the beginning, if you listen to my blurb before the piles, um, you know, your personal evolution is already complete. It has already happened and you are navigating how you want to experience it. So really think about that really think about that. There's an invitation here to think about that because you can struggle <laughs> and resist and you can be depressed. You can be angry. You can be an alcoholic. You can be a heroin addict. You can sleep in a ditch. You can do whatever, uh, you know, 
quote unquote bad. Really, they're not bad. They're just experiences your oversoul has chosen to do and that you, even from an egoic perspective, are continuing to choose to do. And you can have those experiences and there's no judgment here. There's nothing wrong with that. The thing is, though, there's nothing wrong about that. They're not sins. They're not bad. But what are they? Well, they are unpleasant for you. They are literally unpleasant for you, right? Struggling and resisting and sitting in fear. They're not bad. They're not sinful, but they are unpleasant and they do delay your personal growth. Going through unpleasant experiences isn't bad. They can, that can even, unpleasant experiences are some of our most transformative experiences, the ones we learn the most from and the ones that we choose to go through because we know it'll be worth it in the long run. But we are all moving into a place now where we no longer need to keep going through those painful, struggling experiences. We can choose a new type of experience. So invitation here, you know, from Metatron, literally from Metatron. I don't always point out in these Archangel readings, which Archangel is coming through, but very clearly this one is coming from Metatron. So if you want to choose a new experience, that's all you have to do. If you feel like you're stuck in suffering, stuck in struggle, stuck in lack, whatever you're stuck in, you can choose to be unstuck. Your life might not transform overnight, but if you tune into that new frequency of whatever it is that you're choosing, things will start to ripple out and you might think, oh, that never worked before. <laughs> it never worked before. Well, literally every day it is becoming easier to manifest your reality, you know, with your frequency. You know, 50 years ago, it was really difficult. 10 years ago, it was really difficult. Hell, even five years ago, it was really difficult. Even one year ago, it was even more difficult than it is now. But literally with every passing month, every passing day, everything lightens up and everything is clearing out energetically on the planet and in the solar system and just in the whole galactic cycle and the whole omniverse cycle, everything is getting lighter and getting easier and the less dense everything is becoming here. So don't get just don't go, oh, it didn't work before. Well, it, it wasn't time for it to work before. It's time for it to work now. Yeah, and I'm just staring at this two of cups while I'm on that rant. This is your just like the justice card. This is two things coming into balance. This two of cups, your inner and outer realities, just like I was saying, tune into your frequency on the inside, tune into the frequency that you want in your heart space, and it will slowly start to manifest in your reality. And then, you know, it's slow at first and then it speeds up and speeds up and speeds up, <laughs> especially as you gain more trust in your own process. All you have to do is trust yourself here. You don't need to trust anything outside of you. Trust yourself and your external reality will start to match frequencies with your internal reality. And of course, with the two of cups, we always have that possibility of when the two of cup com cups comes up that can manifest as your soulmate or your twin flame. I'm so much reminded of me and my husband before we met. We had both basically given up on ever being in a relationship ever again. We had both just decided to be single for the rest of our lives and fuck it, basically. And then as soon as we gave in and we didn't, you know, we did this independently and then we met and then we had this conversation about how uh, we'll, we never want to be in a relationship again. Two months later, we were engaged and 10 months after that, we were married. <laughs> so my point with that is sometimes when you get to that moment of where you give in and when, when you release something, that is when you actually receive it. You could give up on ever being in a relationship and then, you know, within a year, that is when you actually meet your literal twin flame. You could give up on ever having enough money to pay your rent and then within a year you could have, you know, more than enough money in the bank account where you actually get to go out to dinner and buy yourself nice things. You could finally give, you could give up on ever having a job that you find fulfilling and then you could get fired from your job that you hate and you'll, through a series of synchronicities, you will find yourself working magically, you know, as if by magic in the job that you've always desired. That is what I'm talking about here. It is trusting, trusting the process, trusting in the ride and forgiving all of the times it didn't work before. Forgiveness, forgiving the times it didn't work before. And just, guys, just look at the cards here. If you're sitting there, you know, feeling doughty about all of this, Archangel Metatron, forgiveness, justice, two of cups, the world. Archangel Metatron is coming through for you with justice and the two of cups, such an energy of balancing. And this forgiveness cards to me is really, 
that is actually about forgiving your past, forgiving yourself for the times you feel like you messed up in the past, forgiving all of the people who ever held you back, forgetting all of those sit scenarios and situations where things just didn't work out the way you wanted them to. Don't worry about any of that. By forgiving it, you can forget about it, you know, and move on from it. You can choose a new reality and you guys will. This is absolutely assured. Just think about the significance of getting Metatron himself and the world. All you need to do is let yourself give in to exploring the mysteries of yourself. <laughs> the mystery that is your consciousness and you will manifest your most resonant world. The only caveat here is choose how you resonate because that will affect the world that you manifest. There is no one right way to do this. There isn't a wrong way either. There are just ways that are more pleasant for you and quicker and easier for you. But, but that's it. That's it. There's no bad. There's no sin. There's no judgment. It is just how easy do you want this to be for yourself? How pleasant do you want it to be for yourself? And how smooth do you want it to go? And if you end up choosing to sit in struggle for another year, that's perfectly fine. That is just another step in your journey. And eventually, eventually, it doesn't really matter how long it takes at all. Eventually, you come into this place of manifesting your world. So <laughs> I think that's what I'm seeing for you guys. And good luck on your journey. I feel like good things, so many good things are coming your guys' way. So thank you for tuning in. I hope to see you again soon. Bye.